Uh, welcome to uh, the uh, post-quantum cr uh, cryptography session, part two. Uh, in this session, we'll, we will have uh, two presentations. The first presentation titled Cyber on ARM, CCA Secure Module Lattice Based Key Encapsulation on ARM. Uh, the paper was authored by Anshuman Karmakar, Jose Maria Bermudo Mera, Sue Joyce Inaroy, and Ingrid Berbauer. And uh, here we have Anshuman to give the presentation. Okay, please. Yeah, thank you, Patrick, for the introduction. So, yeah, today we are going to talk about implementing module lattice based post quantum cryptography on ARM microcontrollers. Our specific focus is on uh, Sabre which is our submission to the ongoing NIST post-quantum standardization procedure in the key encapsulation mechanism category. So a little bit about Sabre. Sabre is a CCS secure post-quantum chem. Its hardness is based on the module LWR. So what is modules? Modules are the trade-off between security and the efficiency between the standard and the ideal lattices. And the LWR, LWR stands for the learning width rounding. It's very close to the very well-known learning width errors problem. The only difference from the LWE is that in LWE, you have a sample and you add external noises like Gaussian or the binomial noises to it. But in learning width rounding, we don't need to do that. We get our inherent noise just by rounding the sample down to a lower moduli. So we use less, so we use yeah, less randomness. So during the design phase of Sabre, our, uh, the implementation of efficiency was of our most consideration. So as a result, Sabre is very efficient and it's very flexible. So if you want a higher or lower security, you can just increase or decrease the dimensions of the matrix and you'll get it. And for this, because the, all the basic operations stay the same, you don't have to change the code much. It's a minimal code change. Also, another very uh, important aspect of the, of the Sabre, which it differs from the other lattice-based uh, submissions, is we don't use uh, prime moduli. We use more power of two moduli. So it has two big advantages. First one, the rounding, the one I said earlier, to generate the inherent noise, and the modular reduction. It's basically free in both hardware and software platforms. It's just bit shifts, right? But yeah, of course, we cannot use entity because entity requires some specific structure of the primes. And uh, you may know that in most lattice-based, um, I mean, protocols, the polynomial multiplication is uh, is the most computationally intensive part. But we, uh, the entity is the almost is the best asymptotically uh, best uh, polynomial multiplication, and we cannot use it. This may makes think that. Uh, the, the Sabre may suffer in performance, but actually if we use a combination of Tumco, Karatsuba, and Schoolbook, and as our polynomials are small, only 256 of size, we will show it later that we don't suffer much in, um, in the efficiency or in the speed. Okay, so just for recapitulation, how this multiplication is done actually. Okay, so f we have two polynomials, A and B, both of which size 256 and we want to multiply them to get the product C. In the first level, we use Tumcook four-way. It reduces the big 256 cross 256 multiplication into seven smaller 64 cross 64 multiplications. Then we use two levels of Karatsuva, which reduces one 64 cross each of the 64 cross 64 multiplication into nine 16 cross 16 multiplication. And then we do the multiplication using schoolbook multiplication. And after we are done with the schoolbook multiplication, we can go, we'll go back and actually generate our product C. So you see, to multiply 1, 256 cross 256, uh, 2, 256 cross 256 multiplication, we have to do 7 into 963 schoolbook multiplications. So to speed up our overall multiplication, if we can speed up our schoolbook multiplication, it's great. In the next, in, the, in this work, uh, we, already, we have seen that Sabre is very efficient in uh, high-end uh, processors. We also want to show that Sabre is also very efficient in low-end resource constraint platforms like Cortex M0 and M4. So for this, our two target devices are M0. M0 is a very low-power microcontroller. And it has very, I mean, only 8 or 16 KBs of RAM, uh, 8 registers for data processing. Other, other is the Cortex M4 which actually not very high-end, but actually, uh, kind of sits in the middle of the Cortex M series. 
And it, has, it is the first processor of the Cortex-M series which has DSP instructions. And we'll show how we can utilize these DSP instructions to our benefit. Also, uh, Cortex M4 is a very popular platform to implement uh, post uh, in any public key cryptography, which are uh, targeted for IoT devices or low-power microcontrollers. We saw we have uh, we provide two very high um, two types of implementations. One is very high-speed implementation on Cortex M4. We'll show how we can use the DSP instructions to uh, reduce the number of multiplications in each schoolbook multi uh, multiplication. We also provide an in-register version of the Tim Cook uh, multipli uh, multiplication or the wrapper, which actually re reduces the access to the memory a lot. We have uh, another compact, very memory efficient version on the Cortex-M0. We'll show a just-in-time approach to generate the public matrix, which is very uh, memory hungry uh, in module lattice based crypto. And we also, uh, so, uh, we also provide some optimizations uh, in place using an in place Karatsuba multiplication. So, this uh, in place Karatsuba is, was known for quite some time, but we haven't seen it much use in implementation of pu pu uh, public key crypto. Okay, for the schoolbook multiplication. <clears throat> so, in our case, each coefficient is 13 bits long. So, it easily fits into the half word of each register. In other words, each register can have two coefficients. Now we have this uh, DSP instructions, uh, SMLABT, which can actually operate on the half words of, a re of registers. So you can multiply the bottom half word with the top, top with the bottom, or in any combination. OK, so it's, a, it's an example, uh, just to understand the optimizations. It's a, we are multiplying a 4 cross 4 um, um, polynomial. So in a very naive way. Even if we use this DSP instruction, it takes 16 instructions to calculate the 16 uh, small products. But again, we have this SML DX instruction, which can actually cross multiply and accumulate two half words of a register. Okay, now focus on these two products, A1B0 and A0B1. It is two products, so if we use only SML BT, we need two instructions. Fine. Now, if I replace RA with C1, RB, uh, sorry, RB with A and RC with A, what do we get? We get this product in only one instruction. And in this way, we reduce, uh, to, to have these two uh, products, we can do it in only in one instruction, and thus we reduce our instruction count here. And now we can apply this trick for all these registers. Similarly, we can calculate all of them. In, in, in single instructions, each of them. So now our total instruction count has reduced to only 12, which is a 25% reduction. But actually, you can do even better. Consider these two uh, uh, coefficients, which are adjacent, but they do not reside in the same um, register. Then we cannot use this trick SMLADX. But we have some spare registers. Using some tricks, we can uh, free up some registers. So we have one packing instruction, PKHBT. We can pack these two, uh, these two coefficients in SPR register and then apply the same SMLADX uh, trick again. So using that uh, instruction, we can perform, again, these uh, this four uh, products in only two instructions. But in this case, we lose one. Uh, so we save two instructions, but we lose one in uh, the packing uh, instruction. So for this example uh, multiplication, now we need only 11 instructions for the multiplication instead of 16. In our case, I showed you earlier, we have 16 cross 16 polynomial multiplication. So in the very naive way, it takes 256 instructions. But here, we need only 168 instructions, which is actually 37.5% reduction in the uh, total instruction count. So it may look similar, but just recall the slide I showed you earlier. To have one 256 cost 256 multiplication, you, have 60, you need 63 schoolbook multiplications. So even a very small uh, savings here can actually result in a big saving in the overall multiplication. OK, so in our uh, multiplication, we have in the top level uh, Tumkuk, then the Karatsuba, and then we have the schoolbook. We have shown you how to uh, speed up the schoolbook multiplication. Katsuba, we just unrolled and did some small um, optimizations. The details are in the paper. 
Next, I am going to show you how, how we can uh, make the, over the school book multiplication, sorry, the Tim Cook multiplication faster. So for the Tim Cook multiplication, it has an, initially it has an evaluation phase. So in the evaluation phase, it uh, partitions the polynomials in four smaller polynomials. So our, our polynomial has 256 coefficients. It partitions each of them in A3 to A0, uh, four partitions each of with 64 coefficients. And then it actually needs to create a weighted sum of these polynomials. Actually, it needs seven weighted sum of the polynomials, but A0 and A, sorry, AW0 and AW6 are A0 and A3 only, so only five here. Now focus on the AW2. So, any, uh, so here you see, to create one weighted polynomial, we have to access A0, A1, A2, and A3 all. And each of them has 64 coefficients. So we need to access to the main memory 256 times. So it's just like here. We load the coefficients here in the registers. We put the weighted, we do the weighted arithmetic and then put them in the, in the respective position. So just think if we have to do this, do this for all, the, all five weighted polynomials, we have to access the main memory five into 256, five times 256 uh, uh, to the main memory, which is actually huge overhead in the memory access. Instead, we do, did a uh, vertical coefficient scanning and in-register version of the um, Tim Cook multiplication. So we load our um, coefficients as usual. We put them in the registers, and we have some spare registers. We do the, all the weighted arithmetic inside the registers and put them back in their corresponding positions. Now, actually, we don't add uh, this uh, weighted arithmetic is quite complex, and uh, we don't have so much spare registers. So we did some um, partial sum and some arrangements inside just to aim with the, to reduce the memory access as much as possible. So here you can see, <clears throat> instead of five times 256 uh, memory accesses, now we need only 256 times memory access, uh, external memory access to generate all the weighted polynomials. So it's a huge um, savings in uh, memory access from five times 256 to 256 only. But the problem is, now we have to uh, keep this, uh, this, um, this space in the memory to save, to put our uh, weighted polynomials. Okay, so till now, we, I showed you some, um, uh, in, uh, showed you optimizations which reduces our, uh, which increases our efficiency, not some memory optimization. So in the reference implementation of Saber, uh, we first, we, we need to generate a public, key, uh, uh, public matrix A, which is actually a collection of nine polynomials here. So what we did, we, we first, of course, generate a random seed, then we run SHEC128, and we have a huge array, 3.8K kilobytes of the array. We put all the pseudo random bytes here, then we actually generate uh, each of the polynomials one by one there. But it's, it, this array is 3.8KB, which is huge, and uh, for the, Platforms like Cortex M0 is prohibitively large. We cannot even put it there. So we took a just-in-time approach. So you know, SEC is composed of absorb and the squeeze. We took a just-in-time approach. We generate the polynomials only when it's needed. We first took the random seed, we absorb it, and then run Kitchak squeeze. We generate the required number of pseudo random bytes, generate the polynomial, go do whatever we want with that uh, polynomials, all our computations. We, say all, we have also saved the state of the KCX squeeze. And when you need the next polynomial, we come back. We feed the, uh, the state back to the KCX squeeze. We generate the two eight, uh, against, uh, against some pseudo random bytes, and again generate the next polynomial. And again, do whatever we want with that polynomial. So this goes on for each polynomial. So now, instead of having nine, uh, space for nine polynomials, we need space for only one polynomial. And it goes on like this. Of course, it requires some, I mean, many bookkeeping so that we don't break the uh, uh, like, uh, consistency with our saber uh, submission. But the, uh, the details are all in the paper. But the memory requirement decreases to the one-ninth of the initial requirement. Okay, so for the, for the results. Here is our most uh, fastest implementation on Cortex-M4, and here is our most compact version of the, on M0. 
So here, here you can see, uh, we, of course, we are using Tumku, Karatsuba, and Schoolbook. And uh, the Kyber, which is actually a similar module lattice based uh, game, uh, but it uses uh, entity and prime, poly, uh, prime moduli. So here you can see that in the fastest version of our um, implementation, we are actually a little bit faster than them. And it's important to remember that uh, in, in microcontrollers, we are never going to run keygen and decapsulation in the microcontrollers. It's mostly the encapsulation. So it's the most important uh, uh, operation. And here we are a little bit faster than the Kyber. And the most memory efficient, we need at most 6.3 KB. Our initial requirement was 18 KB. So we have almost three times reduction in the memory requirement. So, uh, the, so it's, uh, it's also, uh, I should say here like this, the, all the um, optimizations I have described here till now, or, in, or which are in the paper, it's, uh, you can apply them on top of each other. It all depends on the user. So you, if you want to have some efficiency and some memory uh, speed efficiency and memory efficiency, you can take some of the optimizations, merge them together, minimal code to change, and have a very good uh, uh, implementation according to your need. So here we did, we applied in the saver memory, we applied some of our memory saving technique with our efficiency. So here you can see the memory requirement drops from almost half, of, half in, almost in all the cases. And we don't lose much in the performance here. So still we are very close with the Kyber, which is an entity-based multiplication. Okay, so yeah. So in conclusion, we show that Module lattice-based cryptography is very practical in uh, resource-constrained platforms. So uh, in Cortex-M0, our most, uh, the, we need maximum 6.2 KB, which is for de decapsulation. Encapsulation is even less, which is actually one-third of our reference implementation. For the Cortex-M4, we, we can do the most critical, the decapsulation operation in only nine milliseconds, which is around eight times faster than the, our reference implement implementation. Yeah, as, an, as I said earlier, the optimizations, which I described earlier, they can be applied on top of each other. So here we also showed that the choice of parameters is very crucial here. And for small dimensions, the asymptotically faster entity, uh, the asymptotically age of entity over the other multiplications don't much matter because this age is actually go, uh, gone by uh, uh, the irregular memory access of entity. And they cannot directly use the special instructions they may, uh, but it requires some special uh, considerations. So it's like uh, insertion sort and quick sort. You know, uh, quick sort is asymptotically faster, but even for small dimensions, insertion sort performs very well. So the asymptotic uh, edge sometimes is lost over the, the overhead of the uh, recursion or something, and for the memory accesses. So yeah, the paper and the implementation are in public, so you are most welcome to visit them. The implementation is on GitHub, in our Kluven GitHub page. And the uh, paper is in ePrint. Yeah, that concludes my talk. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sanjumam, for the nice presentation. Uh, are there any questions? If not, I have a question. Sure. Uh, could you go back to slide 11? Slide 11? Yeah. Uh, so as, as far as I understand, uh, this implementation of cyber yeah. uh, matches category three of the, yeah, on the NIST categories, uh, right? It's for almost 120 post-quantum security. Yeah, so it's pretty high. So, so the, the first question is, uh, if uh, you are targeting uh, microcontrollers, is it a little bit too much to use that high security? Yes. Why not try to take advantage of uh, lower security? Uh, Saber was our recommended parameters, and so we just implemented it. And as I showed earlier, decreasing and increasing is not an issue. It's just small code change, and you can have that. So you just go with yeah. that. Not too high, not too low, let the middle. Yeah, and you get, well, but yeah, if you reduce the security, and target category one, maybe you will get much better performance. Okay, uh, uh, thank you for the Nice. Uh, this, the, the second question is, yeah. uh, how they, so the, regard, regarding the, the, the bit security, how, yes. how the bit security compares between cyber and, and the ones uh, that you're comparing here? Yeah, with the, with the Kyber? Yeah, with, with, Kyber the, and with, the, with, the, with the same levels of security. Okay. Yeah, the same category, yeah. Okay. 
Category three, then? Yes. Uh, yeah. Expert judgment by yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's. If there are any questions? No? So then let's thank Anshuman again, please. Okay. Thank you very much.